Good morning. Good morning, church family, those in the audience, on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome to our first time visitors. We're glad to we're glad that you could join us for our youth service. Please silence your cell phones. Next we'll have our scripture reading by Sienna, followed by a prayer by Brooklyn and a poem by Sarah. scripture reading is first Peter 115 but he has been but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct uh, bow your head and close your eyes uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us all up this morning and getting all of us here safely. Um, please watch over all of us and let us have a good service today um, so that we can understand um, your message and use it and apply it to our lives. Um, I pray that you'll watch over everyone attending the service today and those who couldn't make it. Um, I also pray for anybody who is in need of hope um, and that we'll all have a good rest of our day. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's poem is titled, Drop It Like It's Hot, and this was written by our very own sister, Donna Cooper. <laughs> you attended church on Sunday and listened to the word, but man oh man, come Monday, you didn't practice what you heard. Just the day before, you had bowed on your knees now you're doing whatever you please. While you're leaning on your own understanding, being wise in your own eyes, you're following Satan, the master of disguise. He will tempt you, tease you, and fill your head with lies. One day you'll discover what you're doing isn't wise. As you reflect on your life, there's chaos everywhere. Yes, you had your fun while you just didn't care. But now the loneliness is so hard to bear you realize it's time to change your ways. Only God knows the length of your days. Dedicate your life to Jesus. He'll renew your mind. One path you must embrace and leave the other behind. And the scripture that goes with this poem is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Thank you. Next is our song of the day, followed by the speaker of the day, Pastor Robert Pope. Smile while your heart has been broken 
land Filled with pain, filled with pain Tell me what do you give When you've given your own yeah. Seems like you can't make it through Child, you just stand done all you can. And it seems that you are just not going to make it through. I'm sure all of us have, have been there. Somebody may be there this morning. But when you've done all you can, uh, that's when you take it to the next level. And it's, the next level is he who controls all things. He has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. And folks, his track record is good, if you haven't noticed. God always delivered. So when you've done all you can, you just stand. You just stand and you trust God. So God bless you. And I'm excited uh, that you are here with us today. Uh, those of you who are connected to your live stream, God bless you. And we're excited that you have connected with us today. And I'll guess that we have some of our tutor uh, kids, our parents and family. God bless you. Uh, we're excited that you're here. And we thank you for trusting your kids with us. And we thank so much to tutors who have invested their hearts. With us. So, uh, our young people today, God bless you. Guys are awesome. You guys are. I mean, give them a hand. Thank you, Deanna. And uh, and, and uh, <laughs> Richard Voices. 
Pastor the Pope. I mean, so you, you see the bass in his voice? <laughs> Lenny, I don't know. He's not only growing up, but his voice, man. Our kids are just growing. Brookie, Sienna, you guys are really, I mean, we're just blessed to have some just beautiful kids. And we thank the parents. Uh, we thank you guys so much for, again, uh, for allowing them to come out and be a part of uh, what we, we do here. Because, uh, as you know, you always hear me say, our kids, our young folks, they are not our leaders of tomorrow. They are our leaders of today. So we need to start to invest in them, listen to them, and respond to them. Because they are indeed a blessing. Uh, now, uh, t today, uh, it's youth today, but I'm going to speak to a topic that's for the young and old alike. You know, and, and that uh, uh, topic is what it means to follow Jesus. Yeah, this is something we teach our young folks, but you know, a lot of us older folks, Sister Dickerson, we need to know that also. Amen? Yeah. Uh, but have you ever really, uh, and, and Brother Shaw, God bless you, brother. It's so good to have you back in my corner, man. <laughs> you know, give him a hand. God bless you. Good to have you back. Good to have you back. Miss you. Uh, but um, have you ever really thought about or pondered the phrase, follow me? Follow me? Have you? This is a phrase that Jesus used, you know, a lot throughout his earthly journey. And if you haven't pondered or really thought about that phrase, uh, you should. Because it can lead to a profound transforming change in how you think about uh, the, the Christian life. Uh, it, it will, and, and it's, it, it will uh, change a, a lot about you. If you really ponder, you know, what it really means to follow Jesus. And our scripture today is going to be taken uh, from uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to take a look at verse 19. So I'll give you a moment to turn your Bible, your, uh, your tablet, or whatever. Or you can just join us by looking at uh, the screen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And we're talking about, again, uh, following Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Uh, it's written, as he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you. For you are an awesome God. You love us so much, Father, and you just demonstrate that love for us every day. And, Father, you have called us not only from something, but you have called us to something as you challenge us to follow you. And I pray, Father, you will give me words today to encourage uh, those who are within the sound of my voice that they will hear you and respond to you. Use me today for your glory. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. You see, as Jesus traveled uh, throughout uh, Israel, uh, urging people to repent and believe in the gospel, uh, follow me, was a constant refrain of his message. At the beginning of his ministry, he called his disciples uh, with the concise command, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. See, as uh, his ministry progressed, he told the crowd in Mark, uh, 834, he said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And at the end of his earthly ministry, he recommissioned the repentant Peter, you know, many of you know the story, in John with the words, follow me, follow me. That's how he brought Peter back into the fold. Now, what a profound, uh, meaningful, and thought-provoking phrase. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm going to begin a, a new series uh, of messages, uh, a new series of messages entitled, What It Means to Follow Jesus. What it means to follow Jesus. And I'm led to speak on that topic because uh, I, I believe that if there was ever a time that we needed to, and when I say we, I'm talking about Christians, church folks, if there's ever a time that we need to revisit that phrase, it is today. See, because uh, folks look to church folks, Christians, to uh, lead them, to explain to them, to show them uh, who Jesus is. And that's not always true. Many times, unfortunately, you can't tell 
church folk from the non-church folks. And, and, and that's a problem. So we want to talk about uh, uh, that today. What does it mean to, to follow Jesus? Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm going to speak to that main theme, but I'm going to be speaking to four sub-themes under my main theme, what it means to follow Jesus. Four sub-themes that I'm going to be speaking to over the next few weeks. The first one is we are disciples. We are disciples, and I'm going to talk more about what that really means a little later. And the next one is we are ambassadors. That means that we represent someone else. And uh, the third, we are members of God's family. See, from the moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you become a part of God's family. And we're going to speak more to that. And the fourth one is living of a life of, of worship. See, a lot of folks think that worship is something, uh, such a slack that we only do on Sunday. No, it's not. We need to worship God, and he's deserving of our worship 24-7. So we're going to spend some time there. Now, today I'm going to begin this series of messages by speaking to my first sub-theme. We are disciples. Now, Jesus began his public ministry when he was 30 years old. Uh, the first thing he did was he, he, he go out and he gather uh, a group of guys that he could train. Uh, they're called his disciples. Now, many times in scripture, it tells us that he invite people to uh, become his disciples. And in Matthew 9, 9, it says this. As Jesus was going down the road, he saw Matthew sitting in his tax collection booth. Uh, see, Matthew worked for IRS, right? Now, but anyway, you know, um, he said, come, uh, be my disciple, Jesus said. So Matthew got up. He got up and he followed Jesus. Now today, Jesus Christ make this exact same offer to you and me. Follow me. Be my disciples. He's asking us in 2024 to come be my disciple. Now, what is a disciple? What is a disciple? A disciple is a person who believes in the ideals and principles of someone famous, and they try to live the way that that person does or did. Uh, the word disciple come from the Latin word disciples, and in the Greek, uh, it's the word mathetes, which is in, a, in the Bible it means student, it means learner, it means pupil. A disciple is an apprentice, if you will. See, when a mentor takes on somebody to train, they're called their disciple. Uh, the word disciple is actually used uh, in four different ways uh, in the Bible. First, it refers to, it is referred to as anybody who's being trained by anybody else. Uh, on uh, your job, if your supervisor is training you, you are their disciple. Uh, Moses' uh, uh, disciple was Joshua. Elijah' disciple was Elisha. Uh, David' disciple was his son Solomon. Elijah had disciples. John the Baptist had disciples. Paul had a disciple named Timothy. And you Bible readers uh, know this story there. But there was also six other guys who traveled with him uh, on the road. Uh, Barnabas, John Mark, Silas, uh, and others. A disciple is just somebody who's being trained or mentored by someone else. So uh, that's the first way that it's used in the Bible. The second way that it's used in the Bible is to, it's referred to the 12 disciples. Physically, the 12 guys that Jesus chose, uh, which was also called apostles. Now, we had this discussion, this discussion recently in uh, our small group Bible study uh, as we were studying uh, the, the book of Luke. And those of you who are uh, part of the small groups who are in the studies, uh, journeying through the Bible, or you uh, have either you've already had this discussion in Luke or you will be in the next few weeks. But we learned something about uh, uh, disciples and, and we know that, uh, and apostles. We know that all apostles were disciples, but not all disciples are apostles. And there's a distinction that's made between the two. We won't spend any time there today, but as you continue to study and journey through the Bibles, these are the things that uh, you learn through those small groups. 
So what are you saying, Pastor? Well, what I'm saying, if you're not a part of a small group, you're missing out. You're, you're missing out. And I'm going to speak more to that later. The third uh, uh, way uh, it's used uh, is in the book of Acts. The word disciple is just a synonym for Christians. Uh, in the Bible, they see, they weren't uh, Christian. They weren't called Christians. They were called disciples. In fact, uh, it wasn't until the church had spread it completely out of Israel into Antioch, where at this little church in the book of Acts, that they were first called Christians. Before that, they were called uh, disciples. But uh, what I want uh, uh, us to look at this morning is Jesus' use of the term. Jesus frequently uh, took Jesus frequently uh, took a very common word like student, pupil, disciple, apprentice, and he added new meaning to it. He infused it, uh, if you will, injected new meaning into it. So let's take a look at the fourth way it's used, the way Jesus defined what it means to, to be a disciple. Uh, because about ten times in Scripture, Jesus says this. He says, if you do this, then you are my disciples. If you uh, do this, then you can follow me. So we want to take a look at radical discipleship as we start this series on what it means to follow Jesus. Now, not only are we going to uh, look at that, but when you understand, folks, what Jesus said it means to be a disciple, you're going to understand why we do the things that we do here at Encanto. And I know that uh, some of you, you don't have a clue of why we get involved in the various things that we do because it's not consistent with all uh, churches. Uh, but uh, once you understand uh, this, uh, uh, you're going to understand why we do the things that we do. However, again, it's important that you understand why we do the things that we do here. You need to, to know that because if you don't understand why we do the things that we do here at Encanto, you're not going to understand who we really are because what we do, this is who we are. We don't just do things. These things that we do, the various ministries that we get in, involved in, uh, this is who we are. This is who we feel God has called us to be. Uh, we're not Bayview. We're not St. Stephen. We're not Calvary. And that's all right. And what I mean by that is, see, all of churches are called to a common objective, and that is to reach and develop folks for Jesus Christ. But all churches also are, are placed in a community, you know, with a specific vision, you know, that God want to accomplish through that church. And I'm convinced that God has called us to a very special calling, a unique calling. And it's important, folks, that you realize and internalize that calling, especially if you are a member here. Uh, this all begins with knowing and understanding our vision. See, what, has God, what God has envisioned us to be, what God's molding and making in Canto to be, you need to know. And that's the vision of the church. Uh, and uh, the mission is how you're going to realize that vision. Now, so what is our vision, Pastor? Well, God has called in Canto. Uh, to the vision, to be a, a diverse family, uh, a diverse as in uh, racially, socially, culturally, economically. And folks, just look, look around you. Look around you. That's what we're becoming. That's who we are. We're not a black church. We're not a white church. We're not a, a Hispanic church. We are God's church. And God is molding us to look more like heaven. See, heaven is a makeup of all God's people. And that's what God is doing here. Uh, and it can't help. Amen? A diverse people. What do we have in common? Well, we are united by faith in the gospel, motivated by a love for God and others to do what? To exhort, to evangelize, to edify, to equip, and to encourage. Folks, every week, the, the, the Good News Weekly, <laughs> if you don't remember... What our vision is, take a look at everything that we do here, and it's going to do, uh, is here in the Good News Weekly. Yeah. Only thing you need to do is open it up and read it, everything that we're planning. But our vision also, we have a vision statement here, and our mission statement tells you also. But a diverse people, again, you, you, you're united by faith in the gospel, motivated by love for God and others to exhort, to evangelize, to edify, to equip, and to encourage. That's our vision, folks. So you, you need to, if you can internalize that, 
It's going to give you a real good understanding, not only of who we are, but why we do the things that we do. Now, the mission statement is how we're going to realize the vision that God has called us to. How are we going to realize it, Pastor? We're going to use the, uh, the uh, 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 acronym uh, for WATCH. The W is we're going to witness to uh, uh, the, the loss, making disciples. That's what we do. The A, we're going to adequately train disciples and enabling them to reproduce. Uh, the T, together, together, we're going to build his kingdom. That's what we're doing. The C is caring for the saints. And the H, happily anticipating his return. See, that means we, we realize that every day is not going to be Sunday. We're going to go through some stuff, Lonnie. You know, we're going to have some uphills. But we know that it doesn't end here for us. See, that blessed hope that awaits us is eternity, is eternity with Christ. That's how we're going to get there. Folks, everything that, and, uh, that, uh, that, that, that we get involved in here at Encanto is with purpose. It's not by accident. Uh, we don't vote on it. No, it's not. It's by purpose. It's, it's with purpose. Uh, now, I, I know that some of you look at me sometime when I tell you that, hey, guys, we need to get involved in this. We need to start a ministry. Uh, uh, Jeff, some of the folks that look at me sometimes, the Lord have mercy. The pastor has lost his mind, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I haven't. I really haven't. I need you to trust me. I need for you. I need you to to pray for me, uh, because I'm not just pulling this out the wind. This is what God has called us to be. So you got to pray for me. But hear this. Hear this. Every class that we offer, again, every sermon that's preached. Every program that we develop, every event we plan, every tool we create is to help people become disciples of Christ, encouraging them to do six things. And these six things are what I'm going to be speaking to over the next few weeks. The first one is spend time with Jesus. Folks, there are no shortcuts. You know, you've got to invest some time. Uh, two, loving Jesus supremely. You have to make Jesus a priority in your life. Two, Loving the other disciples. We have to create and develop a love for one another to the point that we realize that the better you are, the better I am. Uh, four, uh, doing what Jesus say. It's about obedience. And our theme speak to that this year, Brother Nolan, as we say fixating and aligning our life to submissively respond to God's guidance. That's all about obedience. Now, and uh, five, serving others unselfishly, realizing that what God has called us to here at the church is much larger than we are. This is a God-sized task that we can't uh, do uh, uh, apart from God. And six, passing on the good news. That's what we're going to do. Everything that we do are connected to these six things. And that's what you're going to hear from me over the next few weeks. I'm going to be preaching to each of these uh, uh, beginning today. Because I'm convinced that doing these six things will assist us uh, follow in following Jesus and truly becoming disciples. I believe that doing these six things will assist us to realize our theme for this year, fixating and aligning our life to submissively respond to God's guidance. So uh, just getting started, kicking off into our first encouragement, which is to be a disciple, you must spend time with Jesus. That's what we're going to begin right today. Uh, you must spend time with Jesus. <laughs> a relationship. That's what this is all about. You must spend time with him. Uh, a lot of time. Because like any relationship, the more time you invest, the more you're going to get out of it. Uh, you can't be a part-time disciple and expect full-time disciple benefits. <laughs> it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't work like that. And you don't fit this into uh, your schedule. Uh, it's about uh, uh, fitting what God has called you to do and the person that you're working with, the people you're working with, uh, into their schedule. See, if I'm being mentored by somebody, if I'm being mentored by somebody, I fit myself into their schedule. They don't fit themselves into mine. So when we have the various training opportunities uh, uh, in the church, you know, when uh, we are having various ministries where we're reaching out uh, to the community, when we have our food distribution, when we have our uh, mentoring sessions, 
and we're looking for more people to assist us so that we can do more. Folks, please don't tell your pastor, well, pastor, I just don't have time. Folks, you can't afford not to have time for the work that God has called you to because, one, it's about something that's much larger and greater than you are. God want to bless you, but God don't just bless you for you. God bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. 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 Now, now, here's what Jesus said in uh, John 12, 26. He said, if anyone serve me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Now, hear this. And if anyone serve me, the Father will honor him. The Father will honor him. Oh, this verse is packed with meaning. In fact, it teaches us three things about spiritual growth. Uh, as your pastor, one of my goals is to help you to, to grow spiritually, not just for this year, but for the rest of your life. And those of you who are connected via live stream uh, today, now you don't have the handouts that we have uh, for these, uh, this, this series of messages. So uh, I suggest you, you get a, a pad and a pencil. Uh, you need to record some of the special verses so you can go back and visit them. Now, you guys know uh, the difference between reading your Bible and Bible study is what? It's a pad and a pencil. And the Thursday night Bible study, what does our teacher tell us every day at the beginning of class? He said, what? Get your what? Get a good study Bible. <laughs> what else? A pencil, a pencil. A pencil. <laughs> and, a, and a pad. I mean, he never had open our session without telling you to do that. And he's not just saying that. He's saying that because he knows that that's how you study the Bible. You need a pen. You need a, a, a pad. So those of you who are at home and do not have an outline, grab a pad and a pen and record some of this. And if you need an outline, call us or do, make a comment in the, session on, in the section on Facebook, and we will either email you an outline or we will mail it to you. So, so uh, reach out to us, and we will get it to you. Now, uh, again, this verse is packed uh, with uh, good information, and there are three things that it makes clear. One. We learn that spiritual growth is a choice. Did you know that? Spiritual growth is a choice. God is not going to force you to grow. He leaves that up to you. So I want you to hear uh, these words. If you want to be my disciple, hear the word want. If you want to be my disciple, then you must make a choice, make a decision to grow. You got to want to grow in 2024 in order to grow. And at the end of the year, uh, you, you're not going to be any mature uh, than you are right now unless you make a decision uh, to grow, to mature. Spiritual growth is, is not automatic. It's not. It's not something that uh, you just accidentally fall into. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't work like that. Spiritual growth is intentional. Uh, it's not something that, that just happens. It's not involuntary. It's not inevitable. You have to choose to grow spiritually in order to grow spiritually. Jesus said, I, uh, I'm giving you the choice. I'm giving you the choice. Now, uh, you know that uh, you can grow old without growing up. And some of y'all need to say amen. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can grow old without growing up. Everybody knows that. See, we know people who are old, but they are, and Brother uh, White always correct me. No, Pastor, don't say old, oh, just say mature. Okay, all right. We know folks who are mature then, but they are still, still spiritually immature. They are still emotionally immature. They are still self-centered. Now, hopefully that's not you, but we know folks like that, right? Okay, all right. So look at your folks. No, don't look at them uh, next, next week. Uh, you know, there are people who have been in church, folks, all their lives, 30, 40, 50 years, but they are still babes in Christ. That shouldn't be, uh, but they haven't ever matured in their life. They have never made the choice to grow. Uh, you, you, you are as close to God, folks, as you've chose to be, as you choose to be. Uh, now, you are as close to him as you choose to be. Uh, now, so, so don't blame your, your boyfriend. Uh, don't blame your girlfriend. Uh, don't blame mom. Don't blame dad. And for heaven's sake, don't blame your pastor. Amen? Okay. You are as close to God as you choose to be. If you're not close to him, it's because you've chosen not uh, to be. And if you're feeling that, you know, you're not as close to God as you used to be, 
had to move. She had to move. God didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, you made the choice. Spiritual growth is a choice. That's what I want you to hear this morning. A uh, two, growth is a commitment. It's a commitment. Spiritual growth is a commitment. You must commit to grow in order to grow. It doesn't just happen. You need to decide uh, within yourself that 2024 is going to be the year that I really get it in gear. This is going to be the year that I take action. This is going to be the year that I start being a spiritual babe. I'm going to grow uh, in 2004. Now notice Jesus said, you must come and follow. You must come and follow. Now, you need to hear this. Uh, first, he said, you, uh, you've got to want it. And then he said, you've got to come follow. If you want to grow, uh, you can't sit there. You can't, uh, you, you got to move it. Uh, you you got to get it in gear. Uh, you can't just sit on your rear. You got to get it in gear. Bottom line is, you know, you got to take action uh, to grow. Uh, and, 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 and this is true in every area of life. We grow, folks, by making commitments. That's how we grow, by making commitments. Marriage causes you to grow up a lot. Brother Shaw, real quick. <laughs> I'm just saying, marriage causes you. I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about two people staying in the same house. I'm not talking about two people that uh, say, I do. No, I'm talking about two people that has become one, okay? A man taking the, the leadership role that God has called him to and providing for his family. Uh, and, and, and a woman uh, is, is submissively supporting. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You know, uh, it, it, it takes a, a commitment. Uh, you know, having kids, and I know somebody, somebody needs to say uh, amen, causes you to grow up, amen? It does. I'm not talking about making babies. I don't know. <laughs> that's not what, I, what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, raising kids, nurturing kids, making the sacrifice for kids. Uh, it takes a commitment. In fact, if you don't make a commitment in life, you remain perpetual in mature. If you don't have a, uh, if, if you, if you uh, have a fear of commitment, you will never fully grow up because we only grow through our commitments. You know, if you never fully grow uh, because you only grow through commitment, then you're going to uh, remain the same. No commitment means uh, no maturity. Your commitment defines your life. You are the sum total of the things that you are committed to. Now, uh, here's the problem. Folks, you can't be committed to everything. And you shouldn't be. Everything uh, is not worthy of being committed to. And part of my job as your pastor is to help you, especially here at church, to sort through all the commitments that, uh, you, that, that you got, and to give you a guideline, support, to uh, decide what's a good commitment and what's a bad commitment. And we have to be really careful with new Christians because you know what we do. When new Christians come, they're open, and they're, they're in the receive mode. And, man, and, and too often we're in the give mode, so, so God, we'll give them everything. And, but we can't do that because uh, they can't do everything. So we as leaders, we have to be cautious of this. You know, and, 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 and not just dump everything on them. And as your pastor, again, it's my responsibility to assist you with those uh, commitments. And um, you see, folks, uh, you, you cannot be committed to everything. And if you are committed to everything, guess what? You're committed to nothing. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, selection is the name of the game. So it's my job uh, to help you to sort through and make wise commitments uh, here at the church. God has blessed us to be a very healthy and spiritually mature church. That's who God has blessed in Canto to be. Now, th this uh, didn't happen overnight, uh, uh, Brother Dickinson. No, uh, the reason why we are a spiritual uh, uh, mature uh, church is because we, are, we have been blessed with spiritually mature members. Not everybody, but we have some. We need to have more, but we have some very spiritually mature people here at the church. And these people, they didn't just uh, go to sleep one night and wake up and found themselves spiritually mature. No, it didn't happen like that. Uh, they journeyed there. And the reason they are spiritually mature people is because they have chosen to make a commitment to grow. That's why. They chose to be a part 
of the various Bible studies, Q, that, that we have. They, they, they chose to be a part of the various ministries uh, that we have. They chose to uh, support financially the church through their tithes and their offering. Uh, they, 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 they chose to make sacrifices that they realized uh, that God has called them to something that, that's, that was much greater than they are. That's how they became spiritually mature. And if there was ever a time, folks, hear this. If there was ever a time when the spiritually mature maturity of Encanto was battle tested and proven, it was during the test, trial, and devastation of COVID-19. Oh, we were put through the test. All churches was. Uh, and, and through the spiritually uh, mature uh, 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 Christian, those dedicated and committed members of Encanto, uh, Encanto didn't miss a beat. No, they didn't. See, we didn't uh, simply survive COVID-19. We thrived during COVID-19. I'm a witness. Some of you know that, but it, it wasn't automatic. As a matter of fact, we were reaching more people than we ever reached. We were teaching more people than we ever teach, yeah? Our giving, our receipts was at an all-time high. Folks, that was no accident. And my brothers and sisters, don't think uh, for a moment that this is the experience of our churches because it wasn't. A lot of churches literally closed their doors uh, because they couldn't make it through these times. But see, but God had, uh, nothing catches God by surprise. So God had placed us into a mold that we were preparing for uh, the inevitable. We didn't know what was coming, but we know that God was doing a work here, Sister White, preparing us. A lot of our uh, connectivity, uh, Sister Stephanie, we, did, we didn't have a clue uh, about the Wi-Fi and the various monitors that, uh, uh, that we were uh, installing, uh, Sister Hall. We didn't know why we was doing all that stuff. But when, when COVID shut the doors, oh, man, and when, when COVID turned the lights out, God turned the lights on, you know? That's the God that we serve, and we've been a testament, a testimony to that. That wasn't about us, and it surely wasn't because you have a smart pastor, because I'm definitely not that smart, you know? But God is. God is. Are you hearing me today? Encanto has always had a spiritual development process in place here uh, that helped people grow to spiritual maturity by gradually making deeper and deeper commitments. And some of you, praise the Lord, has made a choice and a commitment to take advantage of it. Spiritual maturity is not something that happens overnight. You, you grow into it. And uh, you don't expect a person to just get out and run a marathon, do you, Henry? I mean, no. You don't expect a person to even uh, get out and really know how to train for a marathon. Even the training takes some preparation. And you don't expect a brand new believer to act like a person who has followed the Lord for 30, 40 years. But we have an intentional purpose plan and process designed to help people grow through the stages of commitment. That development process is purpose driven. We didn't accidentally fall into this. No, this is something that God has brought in place before us and we, uh, we, we bought into it. And it's working for Encanto. That's why we're not gonna move away from it. Now, some of you have, have gone through the various uh, process, or either you are in the process of going through uh, uh, this, this, this purpose-driven uh, process. It's like a two, three-year journey that we go through. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't happen uh, overnight. And some of you, again, you, uh, you may remember uh, how we began this journey. We began this journey by a study of the purpose-driven church. Remember that? Some of you have been here through that. And why do we start there? Because you need to know what the church is before you can become a part of it and really understand what God has called you to. So after we studied the purpose-driven church, we moved then to a purpose-driven life. Uh, because then you need to know how you fit in, what God has called you to, why God has blessed you with the gifts that he has blessed you with. And after that, we moved into a study of Acts. And I mean, folks, we didn't, I don't mean, talk, I'm not talking about one day, one week, or one month study. I mean, we journeyed there. We spent some time in these studies. And after we studied the, the book of Acts, so you remember we went through several discipleship uh, books, didn't we? <laughs> uh, this is all about developing us, not just for today, but what God knows is coming down the line and what God has called us to. And then we went into a study of Know Your Bible. Know your Bible. 
Now, Know Your Bible study was a, 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 a very high-level study. We didn't get down into the details, but after you moved through Know Your Bible, we went through Journey Through the Bible. That's where we are right now. Journey Through the Bible. You small group study uh, members, you know exactly what I'm talking about. See, we've already studied the Old Testament, and now we're moving to the New Testament. And this is a year <laughs> just in this book. So, but God is doing a work that's much greater than us, and he's preparing us for stuff, folks, that we don't see that's coming. But God knows. That's why we have to stay uh, connected with him. And this is a calling, again, that's much greater than we are. It's about what God wants to do through us. This is how God wants to make our tutoring effective. Reach out and show the community how much we love the community, how much we love our kids. <laughs> this is how God has prepared Sister Hogan, our food distribution, why it has grown the way that it has, and why folks come here and get food, and we, they don't run up against the, Ugh. no, they see a smile. They see a smile, and if you can't serve here with a smile, then we don't put you on our line, because we know that this is not something that we're providing. It's God. God is only using us as a tool to make it happen. And the folks need to not only get the food, but they need to feel the love that exists here. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we couldn't do this without you. If I sound a little excited, you better bet it. I am indeed. Because God is doing a great, mighty work here. And guess what? He's doing it through you. He's doing it through you. And this is our way of getting you again to see uh, what Jesus meant when he said, Come, follow me. <laughs> Come, follow me. For... Uh, and for instance, you know, the very first word of Jesus' public uh, uh, word of his ministry when he started his ministry in John 1, 9 was, come, come see. That's the first invitation. Guys, uh, they said to God, when he, uh, Jesus, when he said, come follow me, they said, uh, uh, well, where are you going? <laughs> where are you going? And the Lord said, come, uh, come and see. Come and see. Come check it out. And folks, that's my invitation to you this morning. You know, if you're not yet on board, if you haven't made a decision to follow him, if you have not yet made the decision, that, that commitment to follow him, come and see. Come and see. Come and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning. Come and uh, rededicate your life if you've already accepted him and allow him to move you beyond that salvation experience. Uh, come and let him move you uh, beyond that decision. Come and allow us to pray for you so that you can move beyond whatever it is that's keeping you or that's causing you from making uh, the, a commitment or from making a decision to follow him. And we're going to stop here uh, for today, and we're going to pick back up here uh, uh, next week with the third thing that we learned from John, from John 12, 26, and also uh, why it's so important that we spend time with Jesus. We're going to stop here, but we will, we will continue next week. Those of you who are at home, uh, if you want an outline, uh, email us, call us so we can get it out to you. But we want you back. We want you connected because I'm convinced that God is saying something to us here as a church, our personal life, and to those who have not accepted uh, him as their Savior yet. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you so much for what you are doing. Father, you are a wise God. You are a loving God. And, Father, we are, too, we are a tool that you want to use, Father, to be a blessing to the people in this community. Oh, Father, help us to grow into that commitment and make that choice to be used by you. For it is in Jesus' precious name that we pray today. Amen. The doors of the church, folks, are open. Are open. Uh, what is the word saying to you personally? Where are you in your relationship with Christ? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? That is the beginning. That's the beginning. And if you know him as your, your Savior, are you involved in Bible studies? Are you involved in the various ministries? What are you doing? Because remember, he has called you to something that's much greater than you. And he's blessing you day after day after day. But he's not just blessing you for you. He want to use you. Uh, maybe uh, you need prayer. Maybe you're wrestling with some things we all do from time to time. Prayer. We'll lift uh, you up to the Lord. So uh, at this time, if you want to unite with us in Canto Southern Baptist Church, the doors of the church are open. Uh, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you want to be young enough of other churches, that's fine. As long as you accept Jesus as your Savior, the doors of the church are open. Or maybe you accepted Jesus some time ago, but you your, your life does not demonstrate that relationship 
Maybe we just and rearrange me. Or again, maybe you just need prayer. You can stand where you are. You can come forward. The doors of the church to open. Uh, Will you respond to his call today? Will you? He loves you so much. You gave oh, how he loves you. Oh, he, he loves you, and, and he wants to touch and your you heart in a way that, that you are not going to be a blessing, but he wants you to be a light and a blessing to those yeah. around you. That's the God uh, that he is. Oh, man, you got to trust him. You got to trust that God, the God that gave the best he had for you. Uh, he, he gave his son for sin that he did not get. He died a death. He did not deserve, but he loved us. Just, 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 and we're and trusting you to do that today, God. Me oh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Uh, use it, Lord. Touch hearts today. Yeah. And we pray that these people will respond to you. That they will respond to you. God, oh, Father, we have a special request uh, today. And I can't we pray for all this alone. My dear brother, I just lay it on the altar. Pray, Lord. And I leave it you know what great alone. request is, yes, Father? Not like Touch his heart. You, Lord God. Realize, have him realize, Lord, that you burn heard him. Away. Lord, yes, I, it away. I pray for What's Sister Carmen and family. And I pray for my dear sister, Marie yeah. Isabella, Lord. You know what she's Take dealing with right now. Well, Father, Take give the doctors the wisdom and knowledge they need to, to heal my sister, Lord, and bring her burn back. Give sister, Carmen, the rest of the family, the confidence and knowing that, 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 that you got this, Lord. Take it away. Oh, Father, take it I pray, away. Lord, for take those it who away. stand in the with courage, that you request. Lord, you know what those requests are. Touch take them, Lord, this fun, collectively and individually, Lord. Move Lord, them beyond those tough spots in your life. Father, your place. Uh, Take your place, God, oh Jesus, the loving God, we acknowledge your son Jesus as one who died on our behalf, Father. And, 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 and we are trusting you, Lord, to, to, to be a blessing. We thank you for your word today, Father. We thank you for the various ministries. We thank you for those who are joining us for the first time today. Be special in their life, Lord. Our children, our young folks. Bless them and keep them, Father. For it is in Jesus' precious name that we pray it all today. Amen. And amen. Now it will be time for offering, and it will be in the hands of our ushers.
close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord, just thanking you for blessing us, giving us all that we need so that we can grow your kingdom here, Father. I pray for everybody right now that whatever's going on in their life, that you'll help them get out of any situation, that they will just keep their trust in you, keep their faith in you, and that you will show them why you are God Almighty, and that you can help us with all things in our life, Father. I just pray for the kids here this youth day, that you'll bless their hearts, that they'll be stronger, they'll have more faith in you, and that they'll be able to live uh, following Christ, Father. So just allow your word to be powerful and touch us all in a special way, and may you bring blessings to all of us as we love you and we give our last if we have it so that we could build your kingdom here in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen next up we'll have a uh, remarks by our very own sister delia price hi everybody pastor pope thank you once again talking about all of us being disciples servants and serving the Lord. Thank you youth and young adults once again for your participation. Thank you all of you youths that are out there attending service today. Um, let's continue to keep our young people in our prayers. Um, let's pray for our tutoring ministry. Let's pray for the parents. We know we're against a lot of stuff, but we know we serve a mighty God. So, God, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying for our young people. Today, we would like to recognize some of our young adults and some of our tutoring, uh, tutoring students. Sister Dickerson? Good afternoon, church. Um, I'd like to take this time to introduce, I mean, uh, to recognize um, some of our young adults. We've been praying for uh, uh, people to come and help out with our children's ministry. And we have four of our young adults who have answered the call. You know, when uh, prayers go up, blessings come down. And I'd like to just uh, take this opportunity to inter uh, uh, introduce or to recognize, I'm sorry, to recognize four of our young adults. As I call your name, will you please come forward? I have uh, Brianna Dickerson. Sarah Melendez. I'm Desmond Carter. And Calvin Dixon. I believe he's at work. I just i just like to say thank you so much for, I mean, they're here for three Sundays out of the uh, month, except when they're here on program. And i just like to thank each and every one of you. Continue to keep up the good work. Your faithfulness and your dedication is really appreciated. So please continue the good work. Thank you. Sandra? Now we're going to uh, give some award to some of our, our tutoring students. They're here with their parents, and we're grateful that the parents took the time to come so you guys can, so you guys can see some of these wonderful students that we have. Greetings, church. Uh, we're given this moment to spotlight our tutoring students. We're so proud of them. They've worked hard this year. And uh, we want to first thank God for giving us the privilege. That's right. We have the privilege of being a consistent element in their time to help them with their learning. And we want to give thanks to God for that. You know, as parents and as uh, anybody involved with their learning, we know that we water the seeds, we plant the seeds, but it's God that provides all that and makes it grow. So I want to thank every member of this church who's uh, given us your support, moral support, pencils, uh, supplies, food. Thanks go to you and every one of you for making it possible for us to even give the time and energy. Uh, we're deeply grateful to the parents because the parents have trusted us to have their kids in our care for you know, four hours a week for a whole school year. And it, 
the tr the, we built relationships with the parents, we built relationships with the students, and we're very proud of these students, and we want you guys to know about that. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about how these kids have grown. Each one of these kids have grown in their learning ability. Uh, you know, you can't keep a kid from growing, right? They start out here, and they end up here. <laughs> but just like Pastor was saying, there's a, a certain amount of intention that goes into growing a particular way. So when you have spiritual growth, you start out making a commitment. Well, we have a commitment on our part, and the students have made a commitment on their part. They're growing in their reading. They're growing in their character. And it's just so amazing to see that kind of growth right before your eyes. So um, right now, <coughs> I want to show you that we're giving them some certificates, little fun certificates that talk about one element that they've grown in, but they've tr gone, grown tremendously in so many different areas. So I wanna call up their names and, uh, and let them know that we're proud of them, that, that we know that they're gonna do amazing things, just like our young people up here are doing amazing things in their future, and they're going to go on and have a fulfilling, rewarding life, hopefully, as Jesus Christ being their Savior. You know, because it's, it's, that, it's that salvation that's going to give them the long-term the long spiritual growth that they're going to get. All right, so I'm going to call out names, and I see a number of people are here. Everybody may not be here, but if you are here, can you please come and stand up with me? All right, so Ethan Calzada. I don't know if Ethan is here right now. We're awarding uh, growth awards and giving them encouragement on his growth mindset. His brother, Eric, we're encouraging him for his attention, and he's grown in his attention to detail. Jose Ramos, he's such an uh, amazing guy. He's the life of the party. We want to recognize him for that. Michael Cloud, he's a budding artist, and he's always decorating his assignments with little doodles. All right, Elizabeth Henna. I know Elizabeth is here. She has got incredible energy. Now we hi Elizabeth. Let's have let's let's have Elizabeth family to stand. Please. Stay, stay right, please. Thank you. Amen. Now Amen. God bless you. Protege Lewis. We're recognizing <laughs> Protege. <laughs> okay. Protege family. Protege family, please stand. We are so proud Amen. of Protege. He's grown tremendously. Um, so now that I've mentioned Protege, his sister Amare is also here. Amen. Amare. She's our amazing future teacher. <laughs> Alia Guerrero Rodriguez. Yeah, Alia. Okay. Awesome. Alia, your family? Have a family to stand for. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And um, Malachi Taylor, he, we're recognizing him for his athletics. And all of these guys are amazing. Like I said, they've grown tremendously. We're uh, not only giving them a certificate, but we also have a little gift card that we're giving them so that they can have a little moment of uh, fast food. Amen. All right, so thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. So we just got to keep praying for our kids, praying for our tutoring ministry. And Kanto, these are what your uh, tithes and offering. We so, you guys support us so much. So, some of you give us donations and stuff. We thank you because we're... We're working on our future. We're working on our young people. So in Canto, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just want to say, uh, 
save the date for June 8, our upcoming community fair. We're going to have games, raffles. We're going to have community resources. Just come out. Bring the kids. Let's have fun. And then, on, and then these are just save the dates, July 22nd to the 26th. We have vacation, Bible school. Come out once again and have a good time. So just keep on coming, bringing the kids, and let them know who God is. Let them know that Jesus Christ died for them, and he'll be there for them forever. We want our kids to stand on a great foundation. So we got to keep bringing our kids and sharing with them. Members. Please remember to donate as you leave to our scholarship fund. We want our kids to be educated, and we want them to do the best that they can be. We want them to be excellent. So continue to give to the scholarship fund as you leave today. Thank you, guys. Hey, man. Hey, man. Uh, to our tutoring ministry, those of you, again, who make uh, the sacrifices, again, to make sure that uh, you're here for the kids, you receive them, and you are prepared. And we thank the parents again. Thank you guys for allowing your kids to be a part of this. Uh, as you can uh, hear the passion of those who lead this, it's not just something that they do. This is who they are. So God bless you, and God bless each of you who support. And, uh, okay. uh, to our visitors and friends and family, God bless you. We thank God that uh, you're here today and worship with us. Those of you who are online, God bless you. And we pray that something has been said to encourage you all. Give us feedback. If you want outlines, et cetera, call us or make comments on your Facebook page or, or just email us, and we will provide you because I will continue to speak to this theme over the next few weeks of what it means uh, to, to follow Jesus. So, again, pray for me uh, that God will use me to encourage you. Uh, I would, we had teachers training yesterday. Uh, Reverend Myers, stand up, brother. Uh, excellent job. Give him a hand. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. And, and, and the teachers, the teachers that came out, we had an excellent turnout. Those of you who wasn't here, you need to be giving me a call at Reverend Myers because we are scheduling a follow-up uh, so that uh, we can capture those who weren't able to make it yesterday, the second Sunday in May. Uh, right after service, so we have a, a session specifically for you because you, uh, we want you to get this information. As uh, you've heard it echoed throughout the things that have been said today, we always want to be and do the very best that we can, and we can only do that as we train and prepare. It doesn't just happen. Uh, so as uh, we uh, have a sign-up uh, roster in the back, we are about to celebrate our 80th church anniversary. So we need our, amen, God has blessed us not to be here, but to be church for 80 years. So uh, sign up your RSVP so we can plan uh, accordingly as far as those who will attend. So there's a sign up back there. So again, God bless you. And as we stand and close, I want to challenge you uh, this week, especially on Tuesday, to pray for our dear brother, Brother McCray. Uh, he's having a, a procedure done on Tuesday, and I'm going to pray for him shortly, and I want you to uh, pray for a grace. Again, keep grace in your prayer. Uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, let grace know uh, that we are praying for her, and we're going to continue uh, to pray for her. My dear sister, uh, Maria uh, Isabella, um, uh, pray for her throughout uh, this week. Again, she's going through some challenging times. And pray for the family uh, uh, as well. And please pray for our youth and our young adults and our children. Uh, that God will protect them. This is an ugly world. If we don't provide and care for them, nobody else will. Let's stand, and I'll give you a closing prayer and benediction. And again, God bless you, and thank you so much for being here. God, our Father, we come today uh, just thanking you for uh, being that awesome God that you are. Oh, Father, our hearts are uh, heavy in certain areas because we have a, a few folks, Lord, who, who need your healing. Brother McCray, Lord, we're lifting him up to you right now as we prepare for this procedure, Lord. Guide those who will be conducting it. Give them the knowledge and the wisdom, Lord, to do what's needed when it's needed. And we're going to be careful to give you the praise. We pray for grace, Lord, that you will bless, keep, and just heal and restore her, Lord. And we pray for Ray, Lord, that you will give Ray the comfort in knowing that, 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 that you got this, Lord. And we pray for my dear sister, uh, Maria uh, Isabella. Lord, uh, oh, what a sweet spirit. 
Lord, we miss her when she's not here. Bless the family and keep them, Lord. And now, Father, as we part this place and go our separate ways, we pray, Lord, for those who stood and requested prayer today. You know who they are individually and collectively. Respond, Lord, to their need, and we'll be careful to give you the praise. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, we pray that it will rest, rule, and abide in each of us. Until we meet again, let us all say amen. God bless you, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you.